Hey yo folks, Quillithine here and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Banished and we're once again in the quaint little town of Brussels which is thriving, unlike what happened to Quillville, which we won't speak of again. We got a bit of mining industry set up, although it's certainly moving quite slowly now. We don't have tons of workers established for it yet. I'm just making sure I've got a little bit more resources banked here, but I think we're going to be uh, putting up some more houses. I guess I just put up a couple of houses over here. That's true, so people are going to be able to move around. Builders are, are living here. Well, that's not quite what I had in mind. I was hoping that maybe the herbalists and gatherers would live here. Although, I guess the builders are currently working in this area, so it makes sense right now. I wonder if I just like, keep watch on this, city, on this uh, building. Will people move? Apparently not. Gatherers do live there, though. Maybe they're still building roads? I actually don't know. I have a weird place for the builders to decide to live, because I'm sure some other people would prefer to live there. Right, like the uh, the wood gatherer, if I do one of those. Where do you come from? Where do you go? Come on, that's, that's not efficient. Oh, forester, there we go, forester herbalist. So some people have moved. Fishermen, fishermen, they'll, they'll work out the details. We'll probably get some more houses in town here in, in a moment, actually. I'm looking at production. Actually, we could just keep it to a pair of workers, and that's like a good sign there that like, okay, I can do more things at this point, uh, including say maxing out. Um, actually, before let's keep the fishermen to two. Let's go up to uh, six gatherers. Although again, that'll just sort of exacerbate uh -huh, the problem of um, population over here. I could really tuck one more house in here. Mm, I don't know, but oh, someone died. Someone else died during childbirth. What the hell? I get, I finally get my city running properly. Everyone is healthy, everyone is fed, everyone is warm, and now people can't pop out a baby or two without dropping dead. Oh my god. So annoying. Anyway, let's build some uh, waterfront property here. Nice high land value. Not that that actually does anything at all in this game, but, you know. Sounds good. I guess what we'll do is actually loop this road around like so, and like so. There we are. That'll be a nice little block there. I like it. A child named Christ was born. Christ. Mm, and yeah, we'll probably want to get a, a school going soon. Eh, only one teacher, but it does make a fairly decent a difference, I think, if they're educated. I don't know exactly how much of a difference it makes, but I think it's pretty decent. I've uh, got a lot of logs there. I wonder if we'll actually want a bigger stockpile uh, going on. Oh, we, uh, we do have a stockpile here. Okay, that's something. Actually, I'm wondering, maybe I should build a bridge here. Because there might be some traffic that want to go back and forth this way. So just in case, we're going to go ahead and plop down a bridge for convenience. I mean, I'm sure no one's going to, like, death marks themselves this time. Right, people? But we may as well get it down. Like, I can bring, build, a, like, a handful of other bridges just for, like, future. But, uh, I think we're doing okay. Yeah, we're good. This is actually a really awkward mountain ridge. Could build a bridge up here and then actually tunnel as well. Just to expose this sort of area, but we'll, we'll wait for that until we need it. Food is still good. We still not maxed out on fishermen or the gatherers, actually. Or the foresters or lots of things. Got those houses, we got this house, tailor and builder are moving in there. Alright, I think I'm going to pause in the building. I'm going to let this last house build, and then I'm going to pause because people are going to start having a few more babies very quickly. And I don't want the population to expo explode out of my control. Um, we could unpause this fishing dock so it at least gets built so that we've got it available in case we need an injection of food. Not that I'm impressed with the fishing docks. Again, I much prefer the, uh, the food gathering, but there you have it. Speaking of, lots of food being stored there. Herbalist is at max. We will get a trading post soon to get that done. I want to check the gatherer's hut here to see what kind of production it's making. Not quite as high, but it is new and it may have not had a full population at the time. This might not be quite a strong forest either, but I'm sure everything will, uh, will equalize pretty soon. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the last video of this sequence, so I'm not sure when the next video will be. I really do have to uh, continue to work on my other Let's Plays for a little bit, but I am this. I find this game very compelling, and I, you know that desire to, to really beat it, and certainly start going for the achievements at some point as well, which many are, are population driven. Can I actually let's stay paused? Can I access achievements from here? Yeah, let's take a look at them. 300 citizens, 600 citizens, 900 citizens. Fully educated population with 200 adults for four years. Uneducated. Reach population 300 without building schools. Jack of all trades. Build a town of over 200 people that has someone working in every pro profession for at least five years. Wow, like, don't t move a unit of population away from something. Mountain men is probably really brutal. 
Harsh climate, small mountainous map, maintain a population of 50 people for 20 years. You simply won't have a lot of room to build there. And the harsh climate is going to be brutal. Fill graveyards at least 400 graves. Equip a population of over 200 adults with steel tools for four years. Stylish, 200 coats. Isolationist, 300 citizens without build a trading post. We actually could potentially pull off both isolationist and uneducated here. Um... 400 citizens without building crop fields, orchards, or pastures. Oh, just growing based on nature. Again, we may be able to swing that sort of thing at some point. Exports, firefighter, 20 wells in one town. All right, well, that, I mean, I can just do that just for the achievement. It does take a lot of stone to build a well, though. That is true. Although, I suppose afterwards you could tear it apart and get some of your materials back, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the case. Um, still good on food, what do I think. And we don't really need more foresters. Or maybe, actually, we could use some. Never mind, let's do that. Um, because, again, they can be idle and turn into laborers, although there's sort of a limit to how much of that we want. Oh, you know what I should do, actually? Instead of foresters, let's um, keep up our, our mine. Let's go one extra mine, one extra quarry. I mean, the mine is what we need consistently, so we can keep up with the, uh, the tools, for example. Did we increase the amount of tools we're doing? Yeah, to 150, so yeah keep the iron going um, and the stone I mean if we're not building anything we don't really need more stone but in in practice we eat a lot of stone very quickly and especially if I'm gonna build more of these stone houses they really use a whole lot of stone I don't really have a firewood problem yet it's probably overkill to start building stone buildings and if I go and do another expansion boom here I will probably revert back to a little bit of wood oh permal the forester has died of old age in fact we might get a few more of those so I'm gonna make sure I've got uh, enough uh, laborers kicking around to do that should generally be okay though. It's autumn again, a relatively early frost here. It's not even late autumn, and things are below zero. So, um, yeah, that's the one thing you don't have to worry about if you don't have crops. You don't have to worry about the autumn coming too early. We will want crops for food diversity at some point, but not quite yet. Not quite yet. We've been we've been stung before. I wonder if we can get any disaster in this game because I know there are some. Did someone tell me they got a tornado? Certainly, I've seen blight. I've never seen fire, although, um, that's despite the fact that I've built uh, wells before. In fact, I'm debating building a well right now. It does take a lot of stone, though. I'm gonna wait until this house starts to be produced, and then I will build it. Okay, more people have reached adulthood. That's wonderful. More children coming into play. That's great, too. Very good. Population is still growing in a relatively controlled manner really do have a stone shortage. Oh, right, because I guess I opened this up too, so that ate some of my stone as well. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to try to keep two general laborers, and then uh, just other than that, we'll pump some into the quarry for now and see what we can do. Food is still growing, and we're not maxed out on all our food sources either. We can actually support a lot more fishermen now because we fit that. We can still put in more gatherers. Uh, we could potentially consider building another uh, hunter's post just to keep the leather coming in. Um, because I think that we can, uh, well, I guess we have a supply here, because I was going to say, we can easily burn through our, all of our leather with the tailor, but the tailor's going to stop once it hits the 50 clothes limit, and then it becomes more of a, are we trading any away, and that's really the only thing that's going to cost us anything, uh, in terms of coats and more leather at that point, so we'll have to make a decision at that point to see exactly what we want to do. 98% remaining here. How much stone have we exported from this? See, it's like, it's not a lot. It's, there's a persistent amount that comes, but it's not a ton. Uh, wait, did I not flag any of this stuff? It surprises me, actually. I would have expected that I would have, uh, collected this debris from around here anyway. We've got enough, uh, little idle people working around. There we go. Come on and do that. Excellent. Just a few more supplies. Food is still growing. Our buildings are told they are going to stop producing food when we reach 5,000. We may want to actually keep that going above that point. I'm not sure. Because you can actually go through it pretty quickly and, and it, it can surprise you. Things can surprise you. I guess as long as we keep building buildings, that count will go down. And yeah, may as well keep building stuff, right? Let's, uh, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead. We're going to build a row of wooden houses here. Not the beachfront property, not quite as valuable. And you do need how much stone? You do need eight stone still for a wooden house. So that's still going to be the bottleneck. Although now we're chipping away at the stones, so we're actually going to get it a little bit faster than we were before, which is good. And we are going to have a lot of miners, so a lot of people again living on this side of the map is going to be totally fine. Totally fine. 
So many tools. Oh, we just went through tons of jackets. Didn't we have 48 of them a second ago? Maybe I was getting confused with the stored tools, but I... I don't think so. Oh, and we're out of leather. Yeah, we may start up another hunting lodge. I'm not sure where we're going to want to build that one. Um, actually, this is still pretty old growthy and not really overworked. I think I'd want an extra house, though. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go and... Food production, technically. Wait, I can't build there? Is there, like... There's no road. Oh, there's kind of a funny hill thing going on. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Alright, I think I think that'll be fine if we do that. And then we'll also build a house on the other side. Again, trying to dodge that funny little hill thing. Something like that. And I think that's fine. I don't think that's going to crush us. We got food stored over at this end of things, including some tools and things, which is good, so people can get nice and, and spread out. Actually, a lot of these things are completely capped, including our log limit, and that's okay. Both houses got finished here. Good, another couple. Yeah, we're going to get a school going really soon. Actually, we got a fairly good supply of things. I'm actually going to go and do that now. Um, we're going to start educating our people. Make them smart. S-M-R-T. Um, no, I don't want you here, actually, because I'm going to use this space, probably more houses, to work on this mine. You know what, we're going to... I think we're going to tuck you in here. Yeah, and then here would be a good place for a trading depot. Then we've got room for a few extra buildings, hospitals, town hall, that sort of thing over here. I like it. We might build a couple of houses over this end, actually, because there's quite a few things they could reach. Is this... Uh, these are all logs, right? We do have a lot of... A lot of logs. Actually, could put the woodcutter a little closer to here if we wanted to, but that's eh, fine. It's fine. And actually, logs get brought over here too, right? We could actually get a second market worker if we really wanted to, to help bring these logs over. I'm not sure how useful that is, though. It still feels kind of silly. All right, good amount of resources. We could actually switch over between um, iron and coal. What I'm going to do is unpause this one. Uh, we don't have quite enough stone for that. How much am I building? I'm still building things, so never mind. Let's get that done. Full on fish. Yeah, we are full on food, although that's still fluctuating pretty quickly. And again, every time I build a house, there's going to be a pretty sizable drop in food very quickly. There we go. People have moved in right away there. I'm going to go pick up some food as well. Which I don't think... I think when they pick up the food, it goes away from my little tally over here. Yeah. Oh, they didn't grab quite as much as I thought. They grabbed the variety. Looks like maybe about 50 units at a glance and the second person came in here. Oh, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, so then the food production will kick back in. And yeah, I guess as long as we've got the food, we can just keep growing. Why not? I mean, obviously the growth is slowed a little bit by this, but, you know, we'll get more and more laborers and workers for our mines and be sitting relatively pretty. What was this? Schoolhouse, right? Yeah, it actually needs iron. I'm going to go ahead and unpause the mine at this point. How are we doing down here? Mm, still waiting on that hunting cabin, but that's okay. Yeah, the number of coats is going down. There's Milber, the reincarnation of Milber from the other town. Mm -hmm. yeah, still waiting on the iron, which we do have, so that's fine. Probably just general lack of laborers because I've got things queued up and so many things going on. And that's fine. We could cut back on foresters, that's true. Actually, I may do that for now. Drop down to four. We'll get you back in there soon enough. Well, actually, we'll go up in terms of builders. <laughs> oh, there we go. Speaking of builders, the schoolhouse is going to get started. Then, actually, what we'll do is pull one of the builders off and assign a teacher. It's fluctuating here, back and forth. Health is good. Not capped out, but pretty good. And we should have a pretty good food variety. People can get herbs if they want. People should be relatively warm. They are lacking alcohol. But until we get an orchard going, we can't really produce alcohol anyway, so they're just going to have to deal with it. I will want to expand out here, which will mean getting rid of the stockpile at some point. I could rebuild the stockpile in town, uh, but I don't think there's much purpose in doing that. Actually, building it a little closer to this mine would make the most sense in the entire world. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Assign a stockpile 5x5 five five over here. And then actually just get rid of this structure completely. Taylor, no goods. 
Grand builders are there, and here's what well, wooden house. Milver living on his own. Oh, it's funny when the weather changes dramatically like that. And I'm sorry that I have the weather effects turned off. I actually think they look quite cool, but I think they make it a little hard to see, especially on YouTube. But even in person, I find it just a little too intense. I think they might get scaled back, or he might get a slider in here. Luke, the person who made the game. I think it's Luke. The one guy who did everything you see. So ridiculous. The trees even, trees even sway a little. Good stuff. Let's gather his hut, right? Full of food. Nice place to be. Really nice place to be. It's too bad you can't trade food. But I guess what you could do is make an economy entirely based on producing food and then just ship it out for everything else. Um, and now you can't do that. In fact, it's hard to have anything that's like purely renewable other than selling wood from your foresters' guilds. Um, because, yeah, you can't sell food and iron and everything like that. You can conceivably run out. And these quarries can expire. So you gotta keep expanding all around the map and just keep like digging up more and more holes all over the place. I wonder if they get filled in again after they expire. Oh, Ter Terka the Builder has died of old age. What a shame. A little bit more quarrying going on. Oh, and a teacher. There we go. We'll pull back on our builders. Just a tad, keep that two labor in there. Everything is awesome! We really could cut back on our food production a little bit more. But I think this is okay. We got a little bit more stone, we can keep building our houses. Although at this point we're starting to get to the point where, like, wow, these people are just gonna die of old age without any more kids. Same here and here. So adding more houses here will not help. Oh yeah. Oh god, we're gonna have a lot of people die off of old age kind of all at once. I may have waited too long to expand my, uh, my households. But we do have a fair number of kids still coming up. So I could actually, I could see in the next year or two a population drop of like 14 to 20 adults just keeling over. Um, and there'll be a little bit of a rough spot in there. But what I'm going to do is hold back on building, I think, at this point. Because uh, I can pull people off the uh, the mines and whatever and make sure we've got enough food production. I guess we have enough stored. We should be able to muddle our way through whatever happens. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be okay. We're going to be just fine. I don't know what you guys are worried about. I'm not worried at all. It's not like I've had a village like disaster so far, have I? No, never. Um, I feel like making pointless little roads. Expand it a little bit further. Get around that little hump. Ooh, come on. Bam. No, oh, people are actually using this road too. Something like that. Oh yeah, we never did get any roads here at all. Well, no, we've got a couple. Okay. And this will result in some trees being cut down. But I'm okay with that. Eat trees. Trees are evil. Taylor there. A little bit. Only one student. But I think it's a, there's an age sweet spot that we'll hit here. Um, with the amount of population we have, we should be able to get to five or six students. Sort of at a peak, I think. Depending on how things work out exactly. Plenty of stone being picked up now. Good. Still some building projects happening over here. Alright, that's fine. Firewood is pretty good. Eventually, we'll need a second woodcutter to keep up with uh, all the demand. But the big thing right now is to make sure that it's got a steady supply of logs. Hell, if anything else, if we want firewood faster, the thing to do would be to move this woodcutter right here. And then we would see dramatically increased firewood production. But I think this is fine. It's easier to get to the market. And again, this is where my main population base is going to be. Lots of stone cutters, right? They're all living nearby. Miners, all that. I think that's fine. <laughs> oh, we didn't build that well. Doesn't need a lot of stone, but I'm, I'm gonna queue it up. I'm a little concerned about not having it for so long. It's too bad that I can't actually place it there. Here, maybe. Is this something I want to use for something else? I think I can tuck a house in there still. So you know what? Oh, and especially now. Oh, I can't do it that way. That's right. Let's do that. I will feel much better if we have a well in our town at some point. I haven't had a fire yet, but I'm just waiting for a fire to come through, rip through my entire town, and destroy it, and then have, in the middle of winter, and then have all my people freeze to death. I can just see that happening. Alright, more people becoming students, so we're now up to two. You can see the count up there. That's great. I wonder what age they become students at. Um, I don't know where I can find a list of students. I can get, like, my teacher. They become adults at, what, ten, I think? 
So I'm going to assume they become student at 5. Maybe something like that. And if they missed their chance, they probably aren't going to go into it at that point. All right. Good resources. Food is still high. Basically keep, keeping itself maxed out. Tool count keeps going up and up and up. And at some point we will flip the way this works and uh, just keep a good trading supply. And if the tr tools are worth eight, so if I had a hundred, then that would mean uh, um, that would mean eight hundred value, which is enough for a cow. I can't remember where the sheep are. I don't think they're four hundred. I think they might be six hundred a piece. Now, one thing that's interesting, I found out in one of my offline plays, um, animals reproduce through mitosis. You can get one cow. And in a year, you'll have a second cow, and then a third, and a fourth, and so on and so forth. Same thing with sheep. I've tested with both. I bought one cow, one sheep, and I had reproduction. So that's good to know. I mean, you know, you've got to remember that a lot of times these are approximations of things. I suppose it's entirely possible that I bought a pregnant cow or a pregnant sheep, but come on. There's no genders, I think, for the animals or anything like that. And I think it's just a percentage chance of getting more stuff. So it's it's a, it's an approximation. It's an abstraction. Your one sheep or your one cow might, in fact, be like ten cows, but it's just represented by one graphically. But it was fun, and I thought, well, you know what? I gotta test this, and I gotta test this in a practice game because if I test this in a live game and it doesn't work, people are just gonna laugh at me. Well, who's laughing now? Sorry, that was unnecessarily angry. I apologize. Mm hmm. How's my hard drive space? X. Oh, no, it is getting a little bit low. Well, it's a good thing we're going to be ending this video relatively soon before it uh, runs out completely and cuts off the recording in a crazy way and probably corrupts the whole thing. You are going to be producing coal. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll let that accumulate for a while. Probably going to need more miners now since we are dividing things up a little bit. We don't have a ton, but um, I don't necessarily want to queue up anyone else right now anyway. <gasps> Milber found a spouse. A student. Oh! Oh, so normally they start working at 10, but maybe if there's a school, they go to school from like 10 to 15, and they're more more effective after that. Uh, oh, we lost a hunter. Okay. I'm actually going to pull back on builders here a little bit. Um, I wonder, or maybe it's just because I just built the school, they like randomly started at a weird age, and then they're going over it. But it's interesting, if going to school delays them becoming workers, well, I guess that's be entirely realistic with the idea that they're more educated, more capable after that. And some people were like, well, how does that make sense? I mean, you know, being a smarty pants doesn't mean you're going to, like, chop down trees faster. Well, I mean, these are not universities, right? These are just basic schools. And it's about, like, all kinds of life things that will hopefully make you a little bit better and a little bit smarter. And, you know, maybe the school is teaching you how to keep your axe sharp. We don't know. That'd be very practical skills. Um, and certainly things like uh, agriculture and... Um, and and building techniques and a little bit of math can help you do lots of things way more efficiently so there they're not getting phds i mean come on yeah and yeah it's not that kind of game <laughs> they're not going around like building m machines and chainsaws i mean god knows like those chainsaws can beat uh, paul bunyan they can do just about anything do you guys know who paul bunyan is i'm getting that name right like the big guy right paul bunyan and uh, what was it blue blue his ox yeah so I don't know if blue is ox. That sounds dirty. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's just like a North American thing. I mean, I guess it's an American thing more than anything, but I certainly grew up hearing that story. Lumberjacking is very Canadian, though. Right? Canada is 90% lumberjack. I don't know if you realize that. Actually, did you know that a female lumberjack is called a lumberjill? True. I don't think it's used very often, but it's there. Jack and Jill. All right. Um... All right, still burning through the stone relatively quickly. What are we building with the stone these days? No, seriously. Oh, the well. Yeah, all right, that's fair. Does need a lot of that, and certainly, of course, we're going to go through the iron relatively quickly. And, oh, I could almost change the blacksmith over to steel tools. I wonder if they prefer steel tools, like if they will focus on getting steel tools first. I do have a, lot of bit of, a little bit of coal. I could really get started on that. Hmm, you know what? I'm going to start producing steel co tools here. We're going to cap it off at 50. We're going to be building a second blacksmith um, once we get our production up a little bit higher. Again, I'm not going to prioritize trade yet. No need for me to do that. Uh, teacher has died and has been replaced. 
Again, um, I'm actually going to just take away all the builders, make them full-time laborers, because they can replace more people dying of old age. And I'm still, right now, that's what I'm mostly concerned with. Like this, this house is going to be empty as soon as Loronko dies. And that's it. These are all people who are not having kids anymore. So, we've got the new generation coming up. They're going to pick up those houses. So, we're going to get a bit of a population stumble. Um, and then there should be a mass replication at that point. Replication? Reproduction? A bit more of a population boom as the uh, the next generation really uh, really goes out. No, oh, 16 and still a student. Holy cow! How long does it take to, take to learn to chop down a tree? Come on, people. Hmm. Renis actually, re nice is the way I read this, which is like uh, kind of like a Unixy Linuxy command line kind of thing, is what occurs to me or what it sounds like to me. Oh, I have to put a cut in here. I've got to stop. i got to do other things, but I don't want to because I'm enjoying this game so much. And I don't know how many videos of this I can promise you going forward. Um, but for now, it's still really fun. I know a lot of people don't have the game, so they're probably craving more gameplay videos. And I hope that I can be entertaining and also vaguely educational, at least in terms of what not to do. So when you guys pick up the game, you'll be that much better at playing. Congratulations. This is a service I provide to you. Uh, more students, more students. Okay, everyone's becoming a student. We got six students, which is great, but at some point I need you guys to mature. Mature. Go out into the world and chop down trees. Actually, you're probably going to be working in the mine or a quarry. Winter has set in. Still have tons and tons and tons and tons of food. Easily support a higher population. We don't have to build any new houses right now, though. Well, I suppose if we did, actually, some people would move out right away. Um, I guess we can do that. Rather than wait for houses to clear up. And I will go back to building just some wooden houses still. There we go. Tuck that in there. We've got a couple going on. There we go. The one builder is all we're going to use at this point. I don't know if the laborers bring the stuff over to the buildings. Oh, someone just did. Yeah, more, multiple people are bringing stuff to this building. So presumably there are other people who are set to laborers because, like, this blacksmith, for example, is uh, is done. Oh, oh, they're not going to build because of the tool limit. All right. We'll unlock the tool limit then. Right. What I really should do then is build a trading post ASAP to get the iron tools out of sort of commission here. I will do that. I wonder if this will impact the fishing. That's an interesting question. I don't know. We're going to keep an eye on this. At some point we're going to max out both fishing places and then compare what their income or output is with each other. Of course, they're not perfectly equal now, so it's going to be kind of skewed numbers regardless. Hmm. Oh, we definitely want to extend the road out to the front of the trading post as well. Might as well connect it up like that. We'll get some stone roads soon, but we don't have enough resources to really justify this. More people are being born. More people are becoming students. We're up to eight students now. Okay. Even more than I expected we'd actually have. But it must be some, you know, the correct age is sort of hitting here. There we go, we got a new wooden house. It'll be really interesting to see who moves in. Keep that pinned. Keep an eye on that guy. I don't know how many, uh, like, how many people are of the right age to move out anyway. Oh, Loronko moved in with someone. Oh, good for you. 73. Going for the older woman there. Oh, Loronko. How many of my people are, like, ancient? No one even lives here. Oh, wow. Or the other one. Yeah, all right. Tell you what, I'll pin this one as well. We'll keep an eye on when people start to move in places. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, okay. So, 33-year-old miner with his child just moved into one wooden house. Hopefully, he'll find a mate and make some more babies. The other wooden house is a little far away from some of the action, although, you know, you could work at this mine. That'd be fine. I guess if I assign more miners. Oh, we're out of laborers, though. See, everyone's dying of old age. People are being replaced. Um, we don't have tons of food. Oh, but I think it's mostly new houses being kicked in. I'm gonna go ahead and drop one fisherman, just to have that spare labor again, to, like, quickly replace someone who might get, uh, into some trouble. Another student? We're up to nine students. Wow, we really... Listen, students, you guys have to graduate. You gotta graduate, so that you can start working, because we need to replace all these old fogies. Seriously. Hmm. I love the smoke. Doesn't look as good on fast forward. That's like one thing I will tell you. I will give you. It looks so good on normal speed. But everything's just like apocalyptically slow. Like, alright, that's a reasonable rock walking rate. And you're still walking. 
Oh god, you're still walking. Why are you carrying fish on your way to the fish farm? You had four. Oh, you picked up a little bit more. Okay, you're just stacking them up. So what did you do? You went here and then here? And then you're going to drop them off? It says picking up, but I think you're still dropping it off. Yeah. Oh, I really have to end this part. But I, I, I know that's the last video, last session of this I'm going to be playing tonight. And I don't want to stop. Damn, this is a good game. Oh, actually, here's what I can talk about. Let me pull up an email that I just got from the developer. Because I asked him. I asked him um, what his plans were for the future with this game. Because obviously I feel like there's a lot you can do. You can keep sort of adding to this game and expanding it. And, you know, yeah, there's a lot to do. There's like 150 different professions. Okay, there's 20. Looks like 20 different professions. And a crap ton of different buildings you can build. And different goods you can... Uh, try to collect at the uh, the market you know gotta catch them all and then all the achievements you can get there's a lot in here to keep you busy but ultimately you're gonna get to these sort of self-sustaining towns and it's gonna be okay and you're just gonna be expanding it's gonna be very satisfying but you always want more challenges in these games you know so whether you're playing Dwarf Fortress and you're waiting for the next patch to come out and introduce some new crazy functionality or some new Tropico 4 DLC or or whatever you know there's always more is always better so I asked him about that and he said um, uh, so Luke said I don't actually I actually don't have a roadmap, uh, but the next things I'd like to work on are a mod kit and Mac and Linux ports. Well, that's very good news. Um, I would actually very much enjoy playing this on my uh, Mac laptop, for example. Past that, I have a bunch of game ideas I'd like to prototype, plus I have lots of ideas to extend Banished. Uh, hmm, maybe I should hire an extra programmer. So, and I asked him about, you know, what his plan for actually releasing new content, if there was any, would be. And he said, uh, if I do DLC, it'll be a significant addition to the game. If I only add a few small things, then it'll be in the form of free patches. So we'll see how that goes. Um, you know, it does... I hope I hope he makes enough money they can hire uh, an extra programmer and, like, two or three artists at the same time. Uh, not to say that the game is ugly, but art takes a really long time to produce. And so if he was able to expand his team, not, you know, not too much. Don't go crazy. But if you can expand your team a little, uh, and especially get people working on art sort of full-time. There we go. Kaylin and Anisha have moved in together. A laborer and a student, 16 and 14. Perfectly appropriate, given the time span. Anyway, so if you can do that and get... Keep, keep getting us the content, because it's like... Man, this game is like crack. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so uh, that'll wrap up this video. And if I do continue playing Banished, it will be here in Brussels. We will be expanding this town. I won't abandon it like the last one. I just, I wasn't feeling good about the last one anymore, you know? Rough start, and just looked messy. This town, I think, has got potential to look kind of interesting, actually. Uh, it is a shame that the mines are such eyesores. But at least, you know, I can zoom in sort of here, and just cover that mine with the profession panel, and uh, get, a, get a nice little view. Yeah, pan around. And then what's the other keys? Uh, nope, nope. No, that's the zoom. Oh, there we go. There's the pan and tilt. Oh, this is kind of a limited angle. Zoom in. Yeah. All right. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.